Hello, welcome to this video. Um, this is a refresher for EndNote. It's meant for the returning education grad students who have already had EndNote training. I'm shooting this about two hours before I go in to see one of the returning cohorts, so I apologize. This is going to be a little rough and I might not have time to get the captions up, but you asked for a review and I'm going to do that. So. We're just going to take a quick look at some major EndNote features. This assumes that you have EndNote installed on your system and that you've been using it. I'm shooting this on my desktop PC in my office, but if you'd like me to do one for a Mac, just let me know. Most of the features are the same. They just look a little different in their slightly different places. But if you would benefit from a Mac one, just let me know. So a quick review. Let's just go to the guides page click on that open up citation software let's open up the endnote libguide we're going to go to help and learn please remember any endnote inquiries at all should go to this endnote email not my direct email i will be answering them this month but we uh, do keep track of things that are going on in endnote and we like to know what people are struggling with so please send it to that one there's some information about EndNote training that happens online, a link to uh, an EndNote manual, and a couple of different help resources that exist here for you as well. But your main um, help source will probably be this EndNote email. So now what we're going to do is go back to the library homepage, and we're going to go to Guides again and we'll open up the research and education guide counseling folks this is all pretty similar to your guide as well let's click on articles and we're going to go into education research complete remember that you can add a few more databases so if we're doing education research we're going to click on Eric but I feel like searching for something slightly different so I'm going to click on academic search complete big multidisciplinary database and I'm interested in the TV show Game of Thrones and the way they represent disability so I'll click that in let's do a search I've got a small number of results coming in here so I'm just going to pick a few of them so when we find some results and we want to do a batch import I, in any of the EBSCO databases we click on this folder and we can either go folder view over here on the right hand side or we can scroll right up to the folder we can take one more look to make sure we want to export each of these results and we click select then we go back over to the right hand side and click on export it's defaulted to an RIS format and we can see that that's the main EndNote you're not going to use this EndNote web you're most likely using the desktop version don't click this off I'll show you why later on now we're just going to hit save this is the reason that we tend to use Firefox and Mac people you absolutely have to use Firefox for a PC it will recognize uh, the helper that will get it in for your Mac people you're going to choose EndNote instead here and click through a few more things so let's just say OK and with any luck this is going to dump it right into my EndNote and it has so you might remember from previous years that I'm a big fan of cleaning things up as we go along so let's go and highlight every single one of these and we're going to do a fine full text so that little radioactive magnifying glass and we'll see if EndNote can automatically find the full text article and attach it to our article so it will always tell you what the status is over here let's just scroll back up so it actually found two out of my three articles which isn't bad but we do have a little bit more work here now I tend to look and make sure that it's attached the proper article for this one it has not attached it so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go right back into the database
and there was a reason I didn't want to remove them from the folder so I'm just going to go back to the result list and I would see if we have the full text and I would download it myself and attach it in there so let's go back to EndNote we also have to check and make sure that it hasn't made any mistakes so from here I can see that we don't have a journal coming up I can take a quick look at my PDF and I can get the journal title and anytime that we have to make a correction in here you double click on it and we would enter the publication right here you also have the option of making some notes of your own right here if you want you have all sorts of different things that you can do and when you're going to close out of that close from this little tiny X right here and then it would make the changes there if that's what you did we also have the option of annotating our PDFs from here so if you're trying to break from paper what you do is click on this little open PDF and hi Tyrion uh, if we want to highlight anything we can do that so I'm just going to click right here and let's just say I've highlighted that another popular option is putting this sticky note right here so I'll put that and place it and we double click and I can say comparison and then we just click that off and again to get out of here we click on the small X it's going to save it and when I preview it I should be able to see that I made some annotations there another part of housekeeping is putting things where they belong so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my groups here and I'm going to right click and create a new group that I'm going to call Game of Thrones or just GOT and I'll go back up to my most recent ones and I can click on them all at the same time and drag and drop them into that Game of Thrones which now has three in there and now I'm going to go look for some information in a different database so let's just minimize EndNote bring our browser back up so that is exporting from an EBSCOhost database let's just go back to the main library and we're going to do a big sum and search so this time let me see here put Game of Thrones in close quotes so the computer knows to search for all of them together so this time I'm interested in how Game of Thrones represents women and I'm going to limit to scholarly peer review and once again we can do a batch import if that's what we decide to do so we can click on the folder and save it and then I can see I have two items sitting right here and in summon uh, what I do is click on export to EndNote and I'm going to click on OK and the new imported references are the two that I've just done so once again I'm going to fix them up I'm going to try and get that full text attaching if I can and it found both of them and now I'll just move them out of that imported reference file and right into my GOT which is now up to five so that's exporting from summon but let's just do one more let's go into your ProQuest education journals and I'll just do another quick search for Game of Thrones here and I'll click scholarly journals 
and I will use this one on Game of Thrones as a teaching tool. So what we do here is click on this little box over to the left and we don't see export anything our site we see one called save and we have to tell it that we want EndNote so anytime it doesn't outright say EndNote you're gonna pick RIS and sometimes we have a couple of different options here I'm happy with what's going on so I'm gonna click continue and I'm gonna say go ahead okay and once again I could try to attach that but I'm just gonna throw it in here so that we can get to the next part so we've got about six different articles on Game of Thrones and now it's time to start writing our paper so let's minimize this so I already have a Word document open and I've made a claim about a recent study that says 77% of freckled librarians blah 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 and let's just say this part about my spouse thinking that I watch it or I mean somebody else watches it to a healthy extent let's pretend that that is a quotation direct from the source so we're gonna have to add a page number on that so what I do from here is I put my cursor where my in-text citation would be and in Word uh, find the EndNote toolbar and click on it I'm just gonna bring this down a bit so I'm gonna click on insert citation And what we do is we just put something in that we know is going to come up with the citation that we want. So if I type in Game of Thrones, I've got a few different ones coming up here. So let's just pretend we're, we're going to cite this one. So you click on it and say insert. And notice here that it has generated my citation. So we just said a recent study. We didn't provide any other information. So we do need that author. Uh, the year but we also need a page number because we did a direct quote now we don't go and add that in ourselves what we do is we click on it and we go edit and manage citation we'll get another pop-up coming up and I'm gonna have to tell it exactly what page it took it from and now that it's put it in there so I can keep going with my paper notice here that it's generated a bibliography if we need to um, play with that bibliography we can go up here and we can make some changes there but just remember if there's any sort of problem in your in-text citation or in your reference you don't fix it here in Word you'd have to go into EndNote double click on the actual citation and make corrections from there now another thing it does so let's just say Cardozo 2018 Game of Thrones best show on TV until the eighth season okay so now we've got this claim from Cardozo now we're not gonna have to put Cardozo in 2018 in here again so let's just do a citation and we'll just pick another one right here so it has put this here Again, I'm going to pretend I'm doing a direct quote so I have something to put in here so if we want to change it it does allow for different types of writing within the body and how that impacts your in-text citation so we'll go and we'll click on this we can tell it to exclude the year and the author but we just want a page number in this case so I can say OK and it will do it and it's actually gone and it's generated the next citation so that's just sort of a, a brief overview of site while you write and a couple of other endnote things but in the meantime let's just go up to endnote here so remember that you have a lot of control over what you want um, displayed here you can move these fields around as much as you want you can just slide them over so that you can see everything if you do a right click or a view up here you can put different fields in or take some away if you're not using it and if you want to get rid of some of your groups that you're not using anymore so clearly I'm not doing this one you can delete that as well and just remember if you wanted to delete a reference completely it's not enough to delete it from 
uh, the folder or any of the multiple folders you've put it into, you actually have to go up to all references and get rid of it from there. So that is just a brief review of some of the major bells and whistles of EndNote. I'll just go back to the library homepage. So just remember, anytime you need help, go to Guides, click open the Open Citation Software, go to EndNote, and if you're having any trouble at all, just email this EndNote.library. If your EndNote's acting really weird, um, get in touch with me. Uh, during your July residency month, definitely give me an email or come in and drop in um, during the informal reference hours, but any other time, just go ahead if you want to set up an appointment and email me. All right, so that is it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you soon.